um, bring your code to RISC-V accelerators with Sickle. So I'm going to discuss what is Sickle, what is One API, and move on to a foundation. Now, we've heard many talks already in the last few days about all the hardware architectures, you get the CPU, and there's been a number of people ventured into the acceleration side of it, where you offload part of your, your application to be accelerated, be it a GPU or a matrix or a vector uh, or a spatial compute. So I'm going to cover that software gap because application developers need uh, an open, a friendly way to program that. They need to fill that gap in the middle. So first of all, about code play. Um, we're based in Edinburgh. That is a view almost from our office. It is that beautiful in Scotland, uh, with the exception maybe there's a few clouds and rain missing. But there is a beautiful castle and it's a beautiful place. We're somewhere just south of 100 people. And uh, two years ago, we were acquired by Intel, but we are maintained as code play software. And we operate pretty much at arm's length from Intel. But we do report into Intel. The reason they bought us is that they want us to grow and support and maintain the Sickle ecosystem. And I'll talk about what Sickle is and uh, one API. It's really all about heterogeneous compute. That's CPU plus offloading heavyweight uh, compute to another system. But we also, I'll talk, touch on this call, this talk about uh, we do advanced development. And advanced development, I'll give a couple of examples of projects we're working with that are funded called Cyclops and Aero. But first of all, what is Sickle and what is One API? So the reason for it is massive amounts of compute, massive amounts of data, AI, cloud, science, you know, algorithms needing to digest all this information and all that data needs to be processed at a high level. So that can be done, you've heard of NVIDIA with their GPUs, AMD. Uh, they do a lot of acceleration today. RISC-V is now growing in that space to offload that acceleration. And so uh, it says here, 48% of developers do target heterogeneous systems to do that offload compute. So it is very well used, very popular. So you see up the top there, you've got this scalar that's typically on your CPU, and there's many architectures here. There's also many architectures being proposed for vector and matrix and spatial uh, compute. But DSL, domain specific languages, start to interfere with how an application developer can program these devices. Uh, the tooling around it, uh, people are very, get very familiar with a set of tools and don't want to start to jump to another one. Um, investment. People already have a lot of hardware there. They've already got a lot of investment in that software. They don't want to come jump into another proprietary environment. So they need open standards, open source, you've heard it many times today, platform independence, multi-platform support. And that's what this is all about. So Sickle is the program and the definition of an interface. It's defined by the standards body called Kronos, similar to OpenGL, OpenCL, the Kronos does that as well. Sickle is another C++ standard within Kronos. So that is a definition of a standard. One API is the code and the tools and the libraries around it. It's C code, it's C++ code. So it's implementations around that. Sickle is a definition, one API is the implementation and the tools. Um, it's based on C++, Sickle. It's a uh, uh, you know, if you've done university C++ or got a history of C++ programming, you will be familiar with, uh, with Sickle. But it's especially there for offloading, for doing programming and offloading to these accelerators. So one API is what we're talking about. Now, there's three steps that you would do. Okay, here's, that's, uh, oh, that's um, NVIDIA and AMD. Now, why would you want to support one API onto these existing GPUs? There's a lot of pre-existing assets in hardware and software. Companies will not take that leap of faith from what they know to this unknown area, and especially when there's a significant amount of investment required. So what you do is you allow one API to also work back into the NVIDIA GPUs or the AMD GPUs. That means they can, first of all, start evaluating kernels just to see that you the, play with the tools, try the tools out, check the performance, and show that it works. That will work back onto their existing GPUs. So you can start evaluating your code transition into Sickle. 
Once you've got that in SQL, you can also start evaluating on a RISC-V platform, an Intel platform, or somebody else's platform. But you manage to do the evaluation. No company is going to start investing until they've evaluated your hardware. This is a fast path to evaluating the route. The second step is that you will start migrating your code across into this SQL environment, the one API code that's all out there with the libraries. So that's step two, and you can transition that across. You can do it bit at a time, and you can have coexistence of, uh, of that code, some of it in CUDA, some in uh, SQL, both running back onto your NVIDIA assets. Again, you've not taken that leap of faith. You can still coexist with the two. And the third step is, once everything's there, you can then start bringing in all your other systems, uh, your RISC-V system, your AMD, your Intel. So it's a transitional. No company takes that leap of faith, dropping everything and moving into another one. They do, do not want two code bases existing. So that's the reason we would we support these plugins into NVIDIA and AMD to make sure that you can make that transition. But then it goes beyond that. You want to have FPGAs with accelerators. You've got RISC-V uh, accelerators in there. There's been many of them presented over the last few days. Now that it's in SQL, we fill that gap and show that that will also work into these hardware accelerators. And there'll be a few examples coming up later. So what is, uh, what is in here? You've got the one API. You've got that SQL implementation with the libraries around it. You'll see them later. But even before you get to that, within RISC-V, you need to go from typically what is, you know, you've got the vector extension instruction set. Some companies also do the LLVM, low-level virtual machine. So they do that low-level compiler. You need, there's still a gap between that. And this is a construction kit. Now, that is open sourced and part of the one API. Even with that alone, that will give you OpenCL. Kronos Open Standard for Compute, that already opens up a large, significant ecosystem of software that's out there and available. There's an intermediate representation there called Spear V. Again, that's a Kronos Open Standard. Uh, that gives you there. So the construction kit is your first step, and that opens up the world above you and open standards and open source software in an ecosystem. So this one API construction kit is based on open standards. Again. OpenCL, Spear V, Kronos Open Standards. It enables SQL, that whole ecosystem above it. SQL, again, a Kronos Open Standard, it enables that. And we've already made this available. The reference implementation we open sourced runs on RISC-V. It's based on the vector extension, RVV. And all that ecosystem's there. It, with all the libraries, DNN, the BLAST libraries, and lots of other libraries, it's, it's there. It enables frameworks, TensorFlow, PyTorch. It gives you that immediate step. 50% of your software, a company's software or, um, investment is in software. It's here. It's already there. It's available. It's open sourced. It's open standards based. It's for the future. Here's one case study. And you can go and uh, Google CodePlay Alteris, not Alteris, Accelera. You can Google that. We made a press release back in March. And Accelera have got a RISC-V based accelerator. Uh, there's quite a few of Accelera here and can talk about it. They took that construction kit. Remember, the reference implementation that we put out there is based on RVV. They took five man weeks. One engineer, five man weeks. They got that up and running. And they've got immediate access to this whole ecosystem. That is a very fast leapfrog into a mature software environment. So there's a the stack. If you look at it on the right side there, you see the libraries, you see SQL, you see OpenCL, and you see all the frameworks at the top. The actual components that they now have got, they've got the construction kit, which is that gives them an OpenCL implementation. They've got deep, what's called DPC++. That is an open source SQL implementation, which is part of one API. And they've got these libraries. Uh, there's DNN library there. MKL is a mass kernel library, includes black, things like BLAST in there. So that gives them an immediate uh, huge amount of software. And here's a quote. The integration with the One API construction kit was straightforward, making it quick and easy to bring the whole open standards One API ecosystem to the Metis AIPU. Great step for Accelera and uh, uh, saves them an awful lot of work. And it's not just work of today. 
it's the future work. As the standards evolve, as the frameworks evolve, new frameworks become available, it will be maintained. They will ha always have that. So, one API. Whenever I talk to people about one API, they say it's an Intel thing. And to some degree, they were absolutely right. Companies do not want to jump into something that's controlled by another big company because you don't know what's in the future. So, what we did was we took this one API thing out of Intel, it was donated across, and we created this foundation called the Unified Acceleration Foundation. It's called UXL Foundation. So, the words I've mentioned before, multi-platform, you don't want a lock-in, it's multi-platform, multi-vendor based. It's based on open source, it's an ecosystem that's all out there, there's code that's already existing, it's already proven against frameworks and libraries, it's already out there. Um, it's open source, it's based on open standards, and bottom line, it addresses just about every market, almost every market. It won't lock me down to watches, but it'll do from HPC, AI cloud, edge compute, even automotive. Within the UXL Foundation, there's a safety critical group, a uh, working group there. Within Kronos, there's a, a SICL standard being defined for safety critical, SICL SC. So again, all this is aligned up and it addresses just about every market that's out there. So uh, many companies, of course, very keen to join this. On the top there you have the founder members. This was just founded back in September, very recent. And the founder members there, you've got Arm and Imagination, you've got, of course, Intel, Qualcomm, Samsung, uh, Fujitsu, you've got Google Cloud, you've got VMware. Samsung, I think I mentioned. So eight founding companies, we brought them together to create this foundation. And since then, since the foundation of it, I'm now embracing people to say, look, come and join us. This is relevant to you. And that's from tools, support organizations, companies, the end OEMs, end, end uh, manufacturers, tools, everyone, come and join us because this is relevant. You'll see Mercedes in there for automotive, and Jeremy here with Embicosm. So many companies joining this now, and I embrace uh, as many as possible. What is actually in this one API thing? I mentioned as libraries. So you see the specification itself. That was donated from Intel into the foundation. So Intel no longer owns it. Implementations, DPL, the SQL implementation, DPC++, DNNs, uh, communication, analytics, threading, maths kernel libraries that contains Blast. So you see a lot is already pre-existing there. And so you can immediately take advantage of that. To ensure alignment from everybody, you've got Kronos and uh, UXL Foundation. That is an alignment. So any updates to the Kronos standard, that will be fed into the One API standard. So you can see the software is always updating and vice versa. If there's updates required to the standard, the UXL Foundation can be contributing into the standard as well. So that keeps things aligned on the standards with UXL. I'll just quickly flip through a couple of examples, the research that's going on with a European funded project. Cyclops takes a, an FPGA, creates a board with RISC-V in there. You put one API on top of that, there's a reference platform already existing with all that software, and that will give you uh, access to all these libraries and these AI frameworks that are out there. I'll flip through that one and go to this one. Second project, Aero. That's a RISC-V based chip, which is in, in Europe for cloud compute put one API on there, you can immediately get access to all these libraries and frameworks again. So two very advanced projects. Follow Codeplay, follow us. Um, we do a lot of publications, workshops, uh, presentations. There's a lot of noise out there, a lot of news coming out there. Do follow us wherever possible. I do apologize for this one. This is, uh, we are owned by Intel. A disclaimer here that I am obliged to, to put on the screen here. So that, my call to you, join the UXL Foundation, join it. There's so much going on there. Contribute to where it's going. Take advantage of what's already there, but do join it. I'll leave that on the screen. You can take, uh, use your phones to get that QR code to the, the page directly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Charles. Oh, we're just about out of time. Charles will be around, as will all of our speakers today. Thank you to all of them. Great session. And now it's uh, coffee break time.
So thank you all very much. Thank you.